Okay, and we're back again. I didn't think this would turn into a three-part series, but I've been asked a few questions if I could show how to gauss the magnets in the car and also how to zero the meter, which just for time's sake, I didn't do the first time. If it's off by one or two gauss, I generally don't take the time. But on this meter, I'll show you the bottom. This is the battery panel. Haven't had to replace the battery yet. On the side, there is two small calibration screws, one for each scale. If you can see that, this is for the scale we're on. And if we can get in there, you'll see that changes the reading. We'll zero that out right there. Okay, now, and it may float sometimes between 1 and 0. It, it's not worth going crazy to try and get it to stay exactly on 0. I don't think anyone's going to worry about 1 gauss. Now, if we can see this car, this is an old Panther. This is the side of the probe with the notch that we're using the scribe line. I like to lay it across the motor magnets. You know, we can't see the... here we go. I'll try and hurry this up. Again, just move it slowly until you get the highest reading. And you can do the other side. Like so. I like to go also sideways to get the traction magnets. Now this will probably go off the scale right there. So we change scales. So now we're over 2200. Over 2300. And if the magnets have grooves in them, it can certainly affect the reading, of course. Okay, now, let's compare that. That calibration process is much easier than the old unit that I had, the Applied, applied Magnetics Labs. Can't really see that. Had this a very long time, got a lot of use out of it, but it was much more of a hassle to use correctly. To calibrate this one, first you had to turn it on. Now you had three knobs down here, offset, you turn it on down here, and then you had run. The offset was a very coarse adjustment for the LCD. You try and get it close with that, then you try and get it closer with the course, and then you have the fine. So to calibrate it, you have to start with this near zero, then you would have to hit internal calibrate. Then on your probe, which plugged in the side, there was a number, a calibration number. On mine it was 354. So when you hit internal calibrate, you use the small calibration screw here, and you want to get the reading on the monitor to read 354. Once you do that, then you go back to run, zero it out again, and go through the process, internal calibrate, and make sure that's still on 354. And sometimes to really get it right, you might have to do that two or three times. The worst, the worst thing about this, where these knobs were so exposed that any little, any little bump and your meter is, you have to zero it all over again. That's why this is nice. The calibration screws are concealed. They can't be altered accidentally. And this one just doesn't want to seem to cooperate. So we'll tweak it just a bit one more time. Oh, that's the other scale. That's why we didn't do that one. Okay, there's right there. And the other one, if it's near a car, 
Make sure it's not near any magnet because that will give you problems. Okay, I didn't want to take the time before to mess with this. This we're limited with the time. Okay. So that's about it on that. Turn it on again. You can see you can go crazy trying to get it to stay exactly on zero. You can pay a lot more for a Gauss meter. Bell Labs has a nice one for about a thousand or eleven hundred dollars. Obviously, this is quite a bit less. Oh, someone else also asked me to mention there is another meter. I don't know the name of it, and I don't have John. Gisello's information handy either. Uh, there's another meter which is more expensive and I've, I've tried it. I didn't like the probe at all because it had a soft casing. All it was was basically shrink tubing and you could alter the reading quite easily just by how much pressure you apply to the probe. So that's certainly not what you want to obtain consistent readings. The brass is hard no matter how much you press on the magnet, you're not going to alter the reading. You just want to make sure you're completely flat against the magnet you're checking. Now I'm thinking about adding the stainless steel to the probe. I'll put it on my list. I think that's about all for now. Uh, we may be back with some more miscellaneous information later.